Hello and thanks for stopping by my channel today. My name is Leah and in this video I'm sharing with you some winter woodland decor DIYs. Now these can also be used in the autumn or year round if you like that type of decor. So stick around and see what I've got for you. DIY number one is actually four projects in one. I'm going to be reusing some of the Dollar Tree birdhouses and I've painted them with a coat of Waverly chalk paint in the color hazelnut and then I'm going to be using some paper that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. This is called birch bark even though I'm more familiar with the grays and white birch um, but yeah it says birch on there. And I picked that up when their paper was 50% off. Always got to go up there and check out those papers. Now this one looks more like a bundle of twigs to me. And I want the solid look. So I'm going to cut some pieces. And I'll put some to the body of the house or the roof line. And I'll be bringing in some more embellishments too. Now the roof of this little birdhouse... Um, I couldn't cover up the detail that I had put on there before. So I'm going to cover... The roof with this paper and i think i can probably get all my projects today with this one sheet so we will see i'm just going to see how big i need to cut that to go all the way over and i'll crease it down the middle there and i'll put a crease with my finger of where i need to cut the paper and since i'm not good at cutting straight lines i'm going to bring in my paper cutter for that and I'll go ahead and cut the strip all the way down if it hangs over a little bit it doesn't matter I can file that right off and there we go I want to check and see which end I want on there yeah, I cut it a little bit wide, but that's quite all right. Well, they're about the same on each end. I'm going to go ahead and apply Mod Podge to the house instead of the paper. And I'm going to use Gloss Mod Podge. It really doesn't matter which you use under the paper. It's not going to, it's not going to show. It'd only be glossy if you brushed it over the top. Got a boo-boo there. I need to replace the blade on my straight cutter. I've been using it for years with that same blade. And my cutter came from Walmart, in case you're wondering where I got that. I'll go ahead and add that other piece to this other birdhouse roof. Now everything's dry, I'm going to use my nail file, get the excess that's overhanging there. On this house, I hot glued a piece of old garland on there, and then added a couple of little pieces from this bag of tiny pine cones and such that I got at Dollar Tree, I guess two years ago. But I think that turned out sweet. This house was painted black before, and I just did one coat. I didn't try to completely cover that because I actually want to bring some, some of that back out. So I'm going to take my file, the best part that's still left on there, and I'm going to just pull down across that. Some of the black will show through. And some of the original raw wood will show through as well. Something like that. For this one that I've roughed up, distressed, you would say, <clears throat> it's the only one with the little pegs still on it. So I'm going to use one of these little birds. And this came in a pack for 79 cents, 90% off at Hobby Lobby. And there's eight little birds in there. And I'm going to put one. It's just the perfect size to go on this. Mm 
and I'll clamp that down there and then put something green underneath that I put a piece of garland on there and I thought it was just too bushy too much for this piece so I decided I'm going to use some reindeer moss instead just a little chunk under that bird and I want my little bird houses to be different heights so I'm gonna go ahead and put this one on a piece of scrap wood I'll just stick that in the middle best I can Then I'm going to paint that hazelnut and maybe try to just dress it down a little bit. I don't know yet what I'm going to do, but then I'll paint the bottom of it as well because that's going to show. This will be on my fireplace mantle, so there's a chance that someone might see the bottom side of this. I used some folk art antique wax and put a coat all the way around that. And I'm not wiping anything off. I'm just going to let it run and just get all muddled up there. And I think that will look pretty. Now on the last birdhouse, I covered the house part instead of the roof with the birch paper. And I just mod podge that down. And now I'm taking my scissors to bring that opening back. And I just poked a hole in the center, and I'm folding the paper over down into the birdhouse. That was the easiest, quickest way I could think of to do that. And no, the pieces aren't exactly perfect to fit this house, but you know what you call that? Rustic. For the roof, I'm going to take one of these solarwood flowers, and they're kind of brittle. But what I'm going to do is soak it in water and try to reshape it to be an a-frame to go on the roof so i will be put that in some warm water for a little while and then i'll just fold it up like a taco and let it dry now i left this to sit in some warm water for about 10 minutes and then i've zipped up part of the way on a ziploc bag and put it in there and i want to leave that outside so it can dry out there. I just didn't know if anything, you know, if I put a clamp on it, it's too flat. And that's the only thing I could think of that would give me the taco shape that I'm looking for. So I'll let that dry out while I'm working on something else. The flower is still drying after a couple hours. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and press it down on top of the house. And hopefully it takes on that shape as it dries overnight. And this one really doesn't need any more detail except for maybe just a little touch of greenery on the corner. Maybe here. I don't want it to take away too much from my birch paper that I have on there. So I'll just cut that down like so and I'll stick it over here I found another little used birdhouse in my stash and I want to cover the body of this one as well so I only need to paint the roof with the hazelnut paint that I used on the other ones I want to put a stand on the bottom of this birdhouse too. So I'm going to go ahead and do that before I do the Mod Podge. And I'm going to brush the bottom of that in case the bottom is seen. Get that on the bottom first. Just another piece of scrap spindle wood. And then I will paint the spindle and the bottom and let that dry. And like before, 
I'm putting antique wax on the pedestal. I don't know what you'd call this. On the stand of the birdhouse. I'm going to put a little bit of reindeer moss on the roof of this one. Right at the top. And then I'll put a couple of those little pine cones. And one of those little white things, whatever that is. Stick that there. I'll put another one of those little white hickeys on the front there. I think those are so cute, and I have no idea what they are. I think I'll add a little pine mm, ranger moss. Yeah, why not? A little moss right there. Since this is so tall, I figure it needs a little more embellishing than the others. Ranger moss down here. I decided to add a little bird on this one too. I'm going to sit it down here at the bottom. And now we can call it finished. And would you look at how sweet those turned out? I'm going to be putting together a simple arrangement with these deer in the middle. Now, I got these at Hobby Lobby for 90% off, so they were $1.99 for the pair. And I saw someone else pop, uh, pass them up because the legs were broke. But, you know, I can tell it's a clean break. There's not a lot of little glass pieces floating around in there. So, I'm going to use my Fix All Adhesive by Super Glue that I picked up at Dollar Tree. The female, I guess it's a female, may just be another buck. It's perfectly fine. I mean, $1.99 for this pair, come on. I don't care if it's broken. Like I said, clean break. Nothing a little super glue fix all won't fix. I've got some E6000 floating around somewhere in my craft room. I bought a new tube and can't find it. It's got buried in here somewhere. I want to get that excess off so I don't have an ugly line showing up. But, you know, the texture of my deer, the look of the texture, I think that's just going to blend right in. Now that I have both legs attached and I've held on to this for, <clears throat> excuse me, held on to this for a few minutes, I'm going to set this somewhere that it won't get bumped and let it continue drying. And I'm going to be putting my arrangement together in this um, grapevine and chicken wire basket. I guess that's chicken wire. Anywho, it's not real flat on the bottom, so I need to give it something for stability for those deer. I'm just going to put a clear plate right in the bottom. And I'm not gluing anything in. I'm going to take some pieces of this pine looking greenery that I cut off an old wreath. I think it looks very pine authentic. And I've put a little curve on those. And I'm just going to put them all around the edge. And I'll let them stick through those places in the wire. And to that I'll be adding some of these antler picks that I got for half price at Dollar General for 50 cents. I'm going to take those bows off. Actually, I'm going to take the whole pick off if I can get it 
out of there. Yeah, that wasn't too hard. And I'm just going to lay those on top of the pine. Go around with that. This one's been a little more difficult than the other. As you can see, it's just glued in a little hole there. And I'll put all five of those around. I'm going to add just a few of these pine cones that I also picked up at Dollar General for half off 50 cents. I don't want to overcrowd the arrangement too much, so I'm only going to put like three or four of these small pine cones. I'm just going to pull these little twine hangers off. And set some of those around like so. This is turning out so pretty, y'all. I'm going to kind of stick that down in the, into the needles. And just look how pretty that turned out. I'm so happy with this. This could be a pretty centerpiece on your dining table or something for your coffee table. This is going to be going on my mantle. No, you can't tell that the leg was broke off of that guy and glued back on. If you're enjoying these winter DIYs, be sure to stop back by on the 25th of this month when I'm joining a collaboration titled Winter Wonderland. And for that video, I'm going to be using a lot of black and white buffalo plaid and bits of silver here and there. So click the subscribe button and click that bell so you don't miss it. I have this much paper left in the birch bark sheet and I've already creased it to cut and I'm going to be covering some little sleds. These I guess would be winter only but um, yeah the other things could be year round if you wanted. And I just made these little indentions with my fingernail. And if I don't get it cut exactly right, I can always file off the excess paper once it's dry. Now this one, I knew I didn't have all of it covered, but I think it will be just fine with those little pieces hanging off the sides there. And I'll have to bring that detail back out, but I'm going to wait until I put the paper on and it dries, and then I'll take my scissors or razor knife. And cut right through there and get these little slits showing back again. Just do an even coat all over the top. I used Waverly chalk paint in the color hazelnut again to paint the bottom and the skids on the little sleds. And I just did one coat. It's kind of streaky, but that's fine. And before I put the twine hanger back on, I'm going to put some little wood beads. I'm going to do four on each of those. I want to have an even number in case I want to hang this up sometime. If you have an odd number, it's going to hang weird. And then I'll put that back on. And I will do the same thing to the other. Now I've filed down all the overhanging paper on the edges of this. And part of it on this one. I've got started with that. And now I'm going to take my scissors and go right in between here. And cut ever so lightly. Like so. And then I'm going to flip it back to the front and push down so that paper is going downward instead of coming out at the front. We're going to do it like that right there. There's so much detail in the design of this sled that I'm going to leave it as is. I 
got a little bit of the hazelnut paint over here but I think it just all blends in together just fine but on this little sled since it's flat flat space here I'm gonna put some embellishments on there and I think I'll just go with some of this greenery up close to the top and I'll just leave that leave that piece of garland all fuzzy just like it is and now those are finished and there are my little sleds Thank you for watching and have a wonderful rest of your day.